It's one of the most timeless animated films of all time and the fourth movie created during the Disney Renaissance era. And with the live action remake on its way, we're looking back at the original animated film with a lot of nostalgia. Heartwarming and sweet like most Disney movies, Aladdin is beyond all the story of a poor boy who overcomes society's struggles and proves himself worthy of the princess he's fallen in love with. Sounds innocent, so there couldn't possibly be anything dark about the movie right? Well, as it turns out, a lot of people are saying that Aladdin actually hides some pretty dark secrets. Or at least, that's what these theories suggest. Like in the case of a lot of other Disney movies, if you dig a little deeper, you might find something a bit more sinister. These are dark theories about Disney's Aladdin that change everything. But before we begin, if we had one wish, it would be for you to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notifications whenever we upload. Let's get started. I can't take it anymore! Jafar was just the middleman. This theory sounds crazy when you first hear it, because after all, Jafar goes a pretty long way to get his hands on the lamp. Your eternal reward. Heck, he even kills somebody to do it, and who knows how many others he's murdered before the movie starts. It takes a special kind of evil desire to do all that, yet when Jafar finally gets his hands on the lamp, he doesn't know exactly what to ask for. Grant me my first wish! You would expect someone who has spent his life searching for a magic item like this to do it for a very clear purpose. But no, Jafar stumbles into his wishes and uses his last wish kind of randomly, asking to become an all-powerful genie. You're still just second best. You're right. His power does exceed my own. Reddit user CTW Studios thinks this is a sign that Jafar was actually the middleman and that he didn't originally start searching for the lamp for his own benefit, but instead for the benefit of his boss. When he gets his hands on the lamp though, Jafar is corrupted by power and keeps the lamp for himself. So who is Jafar working for? Well, here's the craziest part of this theory. He might have actually originally been working for Jack. Jasmine. We will never bow to you. Why am I not surprised? Just hear us out. He couldn't be working for the Sultan because, well, let's be honest, he's not exactly the brightest light on the Christmas tree. Plus, even if the Sultan did want the lamp for himself, with his power, he wouldn't even need back alley methods like assigning Jafar for the task in the first place. Iago and Abu seem to mostly be around for comedic purposes, so we can go ahead and rule them out too. Jasmine, on the other hand, is a likely contender. She is by far the smartest person in the movie, and she shows how cunning she can be when she pretends to be in love with Jafar. She wouldn't go public with her search for the lamp, but instead she uses Jafar, who clearly is infatuated with her, to find it. After Jafar decides to hoard the power for himself, and she's almost killed because of the lamp, she decides to free the genie rather than have it in the hands of a manic monster ever again. Seems like quite a stretch, but possible? What do you think? Aladdin is set in a distant, post-apocalyptic future. I bet you thought Aladdin was clearly set in ancient Arabia, right? Well, some think differently that it actually takes place in a post-apocalyptic future, and here's why. When the genie first gets out of the lamp, he says he's been in there for 10,000 years. When Aladdin gets his makeover, the genie says his current outfit is much too third century. That fez and vest combo is much too third century. If you connect these two lines, you can draw the conclusion that the movie isn't set in 1300 AD, as we initially thought, but in the year 10,300 at the least. This is the foundation of the theory, but let's take a look at some more evidence. The genie is familiar with technology from our era, such as cars and slot machines. He impersonates celebrities who were popular in the 80s and 90s, for example, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jack Nicholson. If you want to court the little lady, you gotta be a straight shooter, do you got it? Agrabah's fish seem to have been affected by some sort of radiation, making them giants. And interestingly, this might actually be tied into the official Super Nintendo game where an unexploded atomic bomb appears in one of the scenes. When he leaves to travel the world, the genie returns with gifts from our era, which might suggest he made those up so that Aladdin and Jasmine don't learn the truth about the surrounding areas being a wasteland. He's big! He's blue! 
Now, I'll be honest with you, every single one of these points can be easily counter-argued. Like for example, the timeline could start in 9000 BC, which means that the action is still happening in 1380, as initially thought. But if that were the case, what's up with all the modern pop culture references? It's up to you to decide whether or not this theory makes sense, but we have to admit, it would be pretty awesome if it were true. A Whole New World is a song about sex. There are a lot of sex-related Disney theories going around, and pretty much every single one of the major movies seems to be tainted in that way. In Aladdin, one of the main theories going around is that A Whole New World is not a song about love or the discovery of the world per se, but about the discovery of each other's bodies. According to this theory, when Aladdin asks, Tell me princess, now when did you last let your heart decide? He is asking her about having sex with him. In the lyric, I can open your eyes, take you wonder by wonder, over sideways and under, on a magic carpet ride. The magic carpet ride is, well, a metaphor for sex. And when Jasmine says that every moment gets better, she is, you guessed it, talking about sex. This theory isn't even that crazy considering the fact that Disney is pretty notorious for intertwining sexual themes into their songs, most notably with The Lion King. The genie is a manipulator. The genie seems like a nice, fun guy, but what if he wasn't all that great? Well, according to Redditor Fan Theories 101, the genie might actually be a jerk who just plays everyone. It all starts with the fact that the genie tells Aladdin that he doesn't want to raise the dead, meaning that he can, but he won't. I can't bring people back from the dead. It's not a pretty picture. I don't like doing it. So the genie can refuse to grant wishes and he is not 100% bound to his owner, only up to a certain extent. Furthermore, Aladdin's first wish is to become a prince and while the genie dresses him up as one, he doesn't actually make him one. In fact, to the end of the movie, Aladdin never becomes a prince. The Sultan only changes the laws so he doesn't have to be one to marry Jasmine. Some say this is just a trick the genie plays on Aladdin to get back at him for having tricked him in the first place. Place. Even with all this, the genie doesn't become evil until he starts working for Jafar. Since genie himself is the one telling the entire story of Aladdin, his perspective is altered and he can present the facts not as they happened, but as he wants them to be seen by those who listen to the story. It might seem that he was forced by Jafar to do all those evil things, but since he cannot actually be forced to do anything, as we've shown before, the only conclusion we draw in this theory is that he wants to do everything Jafar asks him to do. Sorry kid, I got a new master now. The reason? Genie might be angry at Aladdin for not having freedom. Keep in mind that, although powerful, the genie cannot free himself from the lamp because he was bound to it by his creator. In fact, the connection between the genie and the lamp is so strong that if the lamp is destroyed, the genie dies. So only genie's current master can free him from the lamp. What genie wants from the very beginning is to be free, and he is willing to manipulate Aladdin into freeing him. Freedom. When this plan fails, the genie tries to manipulate Jafar into freeing him. When Jafar himself is tricked into becoming a genie, Aladdin's genie gets very anxious. Not because he didn't realize Jafar would be trapped in his lamp, but because he doesn't want Jafar to use his third wish. In the end, Genie sees his own wish come true when Aladdin frees him, but that does not necessarily make us forgive all his previous plays. Jafar was the good guy. Now, how could this seemingly evil villain be the good guy? It pains me to see you reduced to this, Jasmine. <laughs> To understand this theory, go back to the beginning of the movie where the city of Agrabah is already run by Jafar. Well, indirectly, through the Sultan who he's hypnotized. As we can see from the introduction, Agrabah is actually a prosperous city under Jafar's ruling. The crime rates are very low, the economy is booming, and the citizens seem happy and content with their lives. By seeking the lamp, Jafar only wants to ensure his ruling will continue to bring the city to new levels of prosperity and happiness. He basically tries to defeat the Sultan, who, as we mentioned previously, is really incompetent and passes laws on a whim. Well, am I Sultan or am I Sultan? And also battles against Aladdin, who, like it or not, is a con man, and Princess Jasmine, who is nothing really but a spoiled princess out of touch with reality. When you see things from his perspective, Jafar isn't so bad anymore, right? 
Well, it's a nice thought, I suppose. The entire movie is about Aladdin's first wish. As mentioned previously in our video, Aladdin's first wish is to become a prince, and according to Redditor Undependable, everything that happens in the movie afterwards is nothing but a path to making that wish come true. The genie is omnipotent, as he himself mentions it in the movie, and he can see up to a million years in the future. I guess that could actually explain the pop culture references. Everything the genie does from the moment he dresses Aladdin up as a prince is to set him up for success and make him win the heart of Jasmine, which is actually Aladdin's true wish, as being a prince would just be a means to be able to reach her. Even Jafar is but a mere pawn in this grand scheme of fate, and the fact that the genie gets into his possession is nothing but a means to an end, because it allows Aladdin to come out as the hero of the story and make the Sultan bypass his own laws to allow him to marry Jasmine. Of course, if you see this entire theory through the fact that Aladdin never gets to be an actual prince, he only marries the princess, the entire theory crumbles into pieces. But if you think of the fact that Aladdin doesn't want royalty but Jasmine, the entire theory makes perfect sense. Just think about it, Aladdin's precise words aren't to be a prince, but to be made a prince. Genie. I wish for you to make me a prince. Which the genie grants in the end through a series of schemes that push Aladdin to the top of the social chain. This theory doesn't sound that dark, but if you consider the things that genie does when he is quote, controlled, not actually controlled, by Jafar, you suddenly understand just how much it takes to make Aladdin's wish come true. What if instead of Aladdin, Jafar would have stumbled upon the lamp first? What extent would Genie have gone to for him? But those are our favorite dark theories about Disney's Aladdin. Do you think any of them are true? Or do you have your own dark theories about the film? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get notifications whenever we upload. But most most importantly, stay wicked.